You ever get that thing where they're like, uh, hey, that celebrity or such and such looks just like you? And a lot of times it don't, but every once in a while you look it up and you'd be like, holy crap, it really, really does. After this book, you started thinking, multiple timelines, kind of creepy. It's terrifying when you consider that every thought that we have, every choice that we could possibly make, branches off into a new world. We're more than the sum total of our choices, that all the paths that we might have taken factor somehow into the math of our identity. But no one tells you that it's all about to change, that it's all about to be taken away. There's no proximity alert, no indication that you're standing on the precipice. And maybe that's what makes tragedy so tragic. Not just what happens, but how it happens. A sucker punch that comes at you from out of nowhere when you're least expecting it. No time to flinch or brace. If you strip away all the trappings of personality and lifestyle, what are the core components that make me, me? We all live day to day completely oblivious to the fact that we're a part of a much larger and stranger reality than we can possibly imagine. And the most beautiful thing that we can experience is the mysterious. Hey, what's up, bookworms and quantum physicists? Mike, back today to talk a little Blake Crouch. And today we're dipping into the 2016 sci-fi thriller novel, Dark Matter, by Blake Crouch. The first Blake Crouch book that I have read. Now, Blake Crouch uh, really became known during his uh, Wayward Pines trilogy. He got really successful. They even made a television adaptation of it. And that's when he first got on my radar. But it wasn't until I heard about this book that I said, okay, that sounds pretty cool. And this is when he started getting the Michael Crichton comparisons. And uh, yeah, like I said, this is when I first heard about him was through a lot of fellow Michael Crichton fans. Now, you would think right away, okay, that's that's putting the expectations kind of high. Now look, in case you guys don't know this first time you find the channel or something, Michael Crichton is my second favorite of author of all time. So this is a very, very high bar. So once someone tells me, yeah, he's a lot like Michael Crichton, it's like, mm, I don't know about this. You know, you kind of get standoffish. But uh, did he meet that high bar we are going to talk about it today and we are going to do that by starting as we always do and getting into what is it about okay now jason Desson is walking home through the chilly chicago streets one night looking forward to a quiet evening in front of the fireplace with his wife daniella and their son charlie when his reality shatters as a masked doctor knocks him unconscious in this new world that he's woken up to jason's life is not the one that he knows his wife is not his wife and his son was never born. And Jason is not an ordinary college physics professor, but a celebrated genius who has achieved something remarkable, something impossible. Is it this world or the other world that is a dream? And even if the home he remembers is real, how can Jason possibly make it back to the family that he loves? The answers lie in a journey more wondrous and horrifying than anything he could have imagined, one that will force him to confront the darkest parts of himself, even as he battles a terrifying, seemingly unbeatable foe that might be a little more familiar than he bargained for. And guys, that leads us into Dark Matter 2016, a book I think has been very well celebrated. I actually don't know if this won awards or not. I usually look that kind of stuff up. I know that it was a like Goodreads sci-fi novel of the year. I think that was when I actually first clicked the uh, the Wanna Read box on Goodreads. But let's do, like we always do, guys, again, what makes it good or bad. The good, I'm going to say right up front, guys, if you're worried that Blake Crouch was not going to entertain you, worry not, because the pace of this book is relentless. From the end of chapter one all the way to the last page, this book is straight fire. It does not slow down. It does not let you catch your breath. It never once feels like things are kind of dawdling. You're like, okay, let's get on with it. Never once. This book is a thrill ride. I can't say that enough. If you want a fast-paced, 
page turner. You hear a lot of people sell books as, well, it was a real page turner. I just couldn't put it down. I kept saying one more chapter. And people don't mean that a lot. Uh, this, yeah, it's going to be hard for you not to read this in a couple of sittings. It's really, really that fast paced, that easy to read, that easily digestible. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's fast paced in a way that it doesn't feel exhausting though. You know, and I think that's kind of the key. There's a lot of books out there that are just like nonstop action. You're like, I'm just exhausted with this. Never happens here. It gives you enough to take that, that breath of air for a second before you're right back into it. And it's done in just a, just a perfect pace. This book is perfectly paced. And I think that the, uh, the character struggles in this are ones that you, you can really find yourself becoming empathetic to. A lot of times in these books, you're like, okay, yeah, these people are, are thrust into extraordinary situations. But, you know, I don't care one way or the other if they get out of it or not. With this, you really want to see Jason reunited with his family, with Charlie, with Daniela, you know. You get so many kind of false teases of that throughout this book that every time it doesn't happen, you're kind of just, you, your heart breaks just a little bit more. And it's almost like in that kind of like that quantum leap feel to where you're like, hey, will this next leap be his leap home kind of thing? And it's just, it's so good. You're really, really just relating with this character. And if you have a wife and kids, things like that, you're going to really feel for Jason a lot of times because there's a lot of of stuff that can really hit you in the fields if you aren't ready for it uh, because it was just kind of unexpected. I think with most books that are standalones like this, I find myself having a hard time really connecting with the protagonist. In this one, it wasn't hard at all. Uh, about a third of the way through the novel, I was really, really rooting for this character, you know, just to uh, to be able to get back to where he was, to get back to that kind of that, that feeling of, you know, you, you live in your everyday life and you kind of think about, oh, you're just kind of in a rut and, you, and then, you, then it's taken away from you and you realize, oh my God, that's everything that I've ever wanted kind of thing. It's a, a, something that might seem a little cliche to some people, but with this, you really want to see Jason get home. And the thing that I like is since this messes with the multiverse, it messes with alternate realities, you know, parallel dimensions, multiple timelines, things like that, you get to see different versions of these characters. And that's always such a fun little twist because, you know, they can be a complete just cock in one world and just be sweet as pie in the next. And it's amazing. It gives it gives an opportunity for the author to really do like different takes on the same characters. So they've got some of the same personality traits, but they might approach things or execute those ideas much, much differently. It's always something I'm sure is a lot of fun for an author to play around in that playground and uh, he does it really really well here and uh, I, I love that I love that I love getting like this it's something that Stephen King has done with his uh, you know multiple paths of the beam kind of thing getting different versions of characters and you're just kind of being like wow what happened to you in this world that you're so different from the one in my world you know it's it's such a, a such a neat idea to play with and uh yeah the science will really start to to warp your mind a little bit I'll get to that in a second here but uh you know, when you're dealing with alternate realities, parallel dimensions, things like that, you get to play with several genres. And I think that this book has a lot of them. It's kind of like what I said about Hyperion last week, in that because of the narrative structure, you got to have so many different kind of genres. You have to say, look, this is a sci-fi thriller above all else, because you are dealing with stuff that um, if we were able to do right now, we don't know about it, right? Uh, so you got the science fiction in here, but uh, you know you got your action adventure, you got your sci-fi thriller, you got your contagion outbreak, you got your post-apocalypse, you got your painful, heartfelt drama, all that stuff crammed inside a 350-page book. And I think that's what kind of helps it feel fast-paced and never gets stale because uh, e each one of these uh, new timelines that you're visiting, you're feeling like it's a different, a different story. But again, you're keeping that main theme of I want to see this character get home. You know, it's it's uh, it's handled in such a nice way, and that's going to bring me into the science here, guys. I think. Blake Crouch, obviously, I don't know his credentials like I knew Michael Crichton. You know, Michael Crichton was an actual doctor who never practiced. So, you know, he always tried to put so much science into his books. And what Michael Crichton did so great is that he put science in a way that everyone can understand it. And Blake Crouch does that here. You're dealing with ideas of, of quantum mechanics and Schrodinger's cat and things like that. And he's making it make sense to you without you needing, you know, a PhD in astrophysics before you read this book to understand it. And I thought that that was something that only Michael Crichton was able to do because you get a lot of authors who do that and they admit they had no idea what they're talking about. This felt like he did his homework enough to make it simple enough for you. Now, I don't know what Blake Crouch's background is in science, if he's actually into this stuff or if he's just a really big fan of writing science fiction. I don't know. But to me, 
it was the first time I felt like since a Crichton book that someone was explaining something that was heavy science to me, but making it in a way where, you know, a dummy like me could understand it. You know, I don't have a PhD. I don't, I don't use my seven PhDs, you know, to, to read these books. So um, that's, uh, that's something that uh, I can see now why the Crichton fans really have recommended this to me. The idea just of, of parallel realities, uh, you know, things like that will really just start to warp your mind a little bit. I took astrophysics in college and we got into things like string theory. And when you start thinking about it, it almost like scares you just to think about. And this book gets to the scary side of that, you know, multiple versions of yourself, versions of yourself that are almost exactly the same except for one little tiny fraction of something that you may have done differently in a different timeline and it changes everything you know not quite like the butterfly effect but just like say instead of uh you know turning left this day you turn right and you got into a major car accident and then you're crippled or you you turn left instead of turning right and you know what you never met your wife so it changes everything just based off of one decision and it plays around with that in such a great way but again guys this book has zero fluff in it this is a tight 350 page thrill ride you're going to have a blast with it now let's get into some of the bad things here guys there are a couple of bad things here uh it's kind of short uh, i mean look at this like i said 350 pages it's a great standalone don't get me wrong but this is kind of one of those things you're like that could have been another 100 pages and i'd been fine i don't know if that would have made it feel a little stale i i don't know i don't know i it's, it's i when the book was ending i was like i don't want it to end you know it kind of felt like when i was doing later by stephen king most recently where i was like this is brilliant and i don't want it to end same thing kind of happened with this one so you know i'm nitpicking to find some bad with a book when I'm just saying that it wasn't long enough. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's not the first time that this storytelling technique, dealing with alternate realities, different versions of yourself, like that, obviously this isn't reinventing the wheel here. It's something multiple authors have done. But again, I don't think that that means it should be out of bounds for any other author out there. But again, if you're looking at this to be like, okay, this is so incredibly original, nobody's ever done this before, you might find that uh, uh, you know, a mark against. For me, that's a, a storytelling technique that I love. I love, give me that. Give me the multiple versions of yourself that you're dealing with and things like that. I love it. Keep giving me more of that. But that's something that you feel like, nah, I've, I've heard that done too many times already. Yeah, this might not click for you quite as well. And then there's the ending. The ending in a book like this is always going to be divisive it really is i was quite happy with it uh it was one of those kind of where the character has to make a really tough decision you know and uh, all the characters involved have to make a tough decision and you may agree with it you may not i think it's about the best thing that he could have done in this and i feel like it leaves it open for more and i would love for him to revisit this story because i think there's plenty of room for a sequel here i won't call it like a cliffhanger per se but it definitely doesn't have like that final feel to it. So that might be something you frown upon. Me, again, I liked it. It left it open, but it felt closed enough that I was satisfied. But uh, again, uh, the, the, <laughs> the only bad for me there is uh, that it ended. You know, I, I wanted more. Let's talk about why you should read it, guys. Say you're looking to get into science fiction, but uh, you want the science fiction without the spaceships and the lasers. I mean, that's, that's, I, mean I think that's weird, but sometimes that's going to happen for people. You don't want that. You don't want to hear all that techno babble and things like that and you get worried oh well this has got like a lot of science and the guys trust me they, ex they explain this in a way that i feel like my eight-year-old will be like okay yeah i get that that makes sense so you're going to be fine on that level so you haven't really wanted to get into the real heavy you know space opera kind of science fiction you just want some that's kind of in our own world and dealing with maybe some science that we either haven't discovered yet or we don't know that we've discovered it depends on how big that tinfoil hat is that you wear uh i think that you're going to find yourself right at home here you're going to find this easily accessible definitely as an entry point to science fiction if you are a big michael crichton fan i keep saying that but guys you gotta understand that is a that is a mention of respect out of me because crichton is my guy you know besides king that's my favorite author so i'm comparing this to crichton and uh that's for that's 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 about as high a praise as i can give something this is a good thing uh, i'm not saying this is as good as a michael crichton novel i just say this is the first time since a michael crichton novel where i really feel like i've had that itch scratched that no that crichton was only the only one who was able to do that with the science meets the the, you know, the techno thriller as he used to call it but uh yeah i i just I feel like I have been looking for this kind of formula since Crichton passed, you know, back in 2008. And uh, it's just, it's it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And um, the idea of parallel dimensions, string theory, and infinite realities, if all that stuff really, really intrigues you, yeah, you're going to really, really like what you find here. If I got some final thoughts, guys, I say this is probably my most pleasant surprise of the year after Revival. 
I, I would say Revival by Stephen King didn't it didn't surprise me as much because it's King's my guy. You know, of course, um, it's always possible that King's going to throw a curveball out of nowhere. And I'm going to be like, holy hell, the old man still got it. I mean, he just did it with later, and he did it Revival. Uh, so it, it's not un unthinkable to, to say, okay, yeah, I can see that surprise me. With this, I had a lot of people recommending it to me. Again, they were telling me, oh, it's, it's Michael Crichton-ish. And I'm like, yeah, okay, sure it is. Yeah, just like every book you guys tell me is like Dune. And I read it. And I'm like, yeah, that ain't like Dune at all. Did you guys read Dune? Clearly not. So I guess I was kind of expecting that with this. So when I got what I got, and I said, that, damn, that, that, that doesn't sound... Now, look, his writing style is not like Crichton. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, you could put Michael Crichton on the front of this book and hand it to somebody and they'd be fooled. Again, what I'm saying is fans of Michael Crichton will be right at home with this. It will feel like putting on an old comfortable pair of gym pants or something like that. But um, yeah, quick standalone uh, that's going to leave you wanting more for sure. And uh, guys, I mean, it's just this simple. I can't wait to try Recursion later this year now. I'm really, really interested in this author. Uh, I've heard some people say that they felt like Recursion was kind of um, redundant of this book. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know if necessarily they're saying it's just the exact same story uh, told from a different point of view or what, or if we're just dealing with like time travel or things. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to find out what it means. But it always seemed like before I did this, people either love recursion and didn't like dark matter or they love dark matter and didn't care for recursion. So I'm interested to see, even though they're standalones, I'm interested to see what the differences are here. And if I love that, then I'm going to go back to Wayward Pines, which I just bought on digital after I read this book, because I was like, I think this is going to be an author that I really, really dig, and I want to read more from. So guys, um, look, I, I know I gushed recently about Hyperion, and I, I was pretty sure that was going to be a layup for my book of the month, for the month of April. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be close, because uh, look, I think that Hyperion is an all-timer. That's an all-time science fiction novel, for sure. And this is very different, but I had such a good time with this. It's a, it's, it's feeling like a one A one B right now. So it's like it's one of those things where I feel like, yeah, Hyperion is the obviously, the more science fiction book than this. You know, that's that's like the epic, whereas this is just like a sci fi thriller. And, and I'm trying not to compare the two. I just, I, I'm going. It's going to come down to these two for my book of the month. That's the only reason I'm comparing the two of them. You should read both of them. There, that's what I'm saying. You should definitely read both of them because they're both just fantastic little reads. About the same length, too, but I think it'll fly through this one a lot faster. So, guys, have you, read, have you read Blake Crouch? Have you read Dark Matter? Drop in the comments and let me know what you prefer. Do you think I'm going to like Recursion? Did you like Wayward Pines? All this stuff is over for discussion, but please, no spoilers. Please, I would like not to know anything about Recursion going in because I didn't know anything about this going in, and I think that might be part of the reason why it kind of blew me away. So, guys, I hope you will pick it up and check it out and let me know what you think. Hit me in the comments, and I'll talk to you there.